love and, and love, love and like yeah. ooh, it's hot guys like it blows my mind that this is your first like leading role in, in a big studio movie because it feels so long overdue but it's also your first horror movie if i'm wrong right and i just wondered what it was like digging into the to the horror universe and if that's a genre you always want to try out well i've always been very um open to try all the genres because i think the way that each genre tells story like there's obviously the kind of styles of telling story that are really interesting and i've always wanted to try different types of storytelling and in different ways so yes i've always wanted to do horror and thriller type movies or tv shows because i think it's just a really fun experience um as a viewer like as a as a fan and as audience member you're kind of taken on this journey and you're trying to work it out before the movie tells you what's you know you're like it's like you kind of become little detectives just like watching it i thoroughly enjoy that so the idea of like getting to create one was just so exciting and so fun and also being like a lead of a movie that is sort of a, like a wonderful experience so Ow. let me see <gasps> i like the fact that it's kind of a subversion of like the romantic genre trope that it, there's like the destination wedding and all these exciting things are going to happen i really like that aspect of the movie and i was hoping you could talk to me a little bit about that yeah i'm glad you were the first person to ask that question and it's a good one um yeah i mean to me there's all these kind of yeah destination wedding kind of romance films and to be honest uh i was actually i got married during the process of making the film and this was probably a lot of my uh fears of getting married coming out onto the screen, you know, to be honest. To me, you know, like you said, there, there is what we don't like to acknowledge with marriage is that there is a history where it was just kind of uh, buying women, where it was a financial contract, you know, up until 50, 60 years ago, women couldn't even own their own house, let alone their own bank account. So uh, to me, it was kind of like, like you said, subverting what we see as romance and letting the horrors kind of fester to the surface. I really like seeing Sean Pertwee in it because we're all kind of big fans of his at Joe Blow and I feel like he's one of those guys that's just not used enough. I agree. And what about that voice, right? I could like, oh, amazing. He could read like the dictionary to me and I would be so happy. He's just, and also just like such a great human. And he comes from like three generations of actors. He's a consummate professional. I loved working with Sean. I, I mean, I, I could kind of feel that there were a lot of, um, a lot of inspiration, you know, some uh, uh, horror inspirations in this, but I was wondering if you could talk to me a little bit about your feeling for the genre and what movies inspired you, because there was a lot of atmosphere to this that I thought was really cool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm someone who grew up on horror. I, I just, you know, I was a big, big geek of like Jaws and Alien and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and all of those kind of, you know, The Omen, The Fly, I love Cronenberg. To me, you know, all of obviously all those films inspire you as a filmmaker throughout time. But what I purposefully did in pre-production was I watched every single vampire film ever made to make sure I wasn't doing that. So I, I really wanted to create, you know, a unique, fresh film uh, with my cinematographer and with all my crew. I really wanted to, you know, not do things that have been done before. Uh, and I like to think that we've achieved that. But that being said, you know, obviously I'm inspired by, you know, so many of the great filmmakers before me. And there's a lot of little nods in there. The wallpaper in the hall is the same as the carpet in The Shining. You know, <laughs> I, ga I gave little nods to my favorite filmmakers. The violin that, that they're playing during the rehearsal dinner is the same song, the... Um, the Lakme song that um, is played in Tony Scott's Bahanga. You know, so sometimes I just wanted to acknowledge oh, nice. the greats that came before me, but um, I definitely tried to give it a fresh spin. I was but that once broken bond will be renewed tonight. <laughs> to Eve, my new bride. Thomas, I have to ask you also, one of the the, the interesting thing about this, like, so Natalie was saying you have to figure things out along the way. By necessity, a character like Iris has a lot of duality. So I was wondering for you, was that kind of the big challenge for you taking the role? I guess so, yeah. I mean, it was really exciting. It's as if I was cast in a movie, but got to play two characters, which I really, really enjoyed doing. Um, I think that the challenge was more playing, being a, a bad character who is playing a good character, if that makes sense. Because I still wanted it to be uncertain how he was or like who he was. So it's trying to get that like fine line where you're watching it and you're not like, oh yeah, he's bad, he's bad. Or no, no, it can never be him. I still wanted to find that like... Yeah, like I'm So I find that kind of hard. 
<laughs> um, no hard challenges. You did a fantastic job. I don't know what. Oh yeah, I thought you you were both fantastic in it. And oh, well, yeah. I also really liked Jessica's direction. I thought she did it. Or she she made a really kind of interesting mood with the movie. But Natalie, I have to ask you: Did you find it clever when you read the script that it was kind of a subversion of that classic? romantic comedy archetype where it's the destination wedding and it's anything but what's well, glamorous but doesn't quite go the way everybody hopes <laughs> yeah i did i loved that it's 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 very funny because of especially when you hear the interactions of evie and grace you know kind of talking about you know having a holiday romance with the sort of you know cute guy at the fancy house like it's sort of it all starts quite fun and light and then like just so gradually we realize like each thread is like being pulled and pulled and eventually it all <laughs> unravels the whole thing unravels and it's just that slow build and that drip dripping of like information and planting of seeds like mm. throughout this sort of fun you know backdrop of like a wedding and exciting new family and yeah and love and, 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 love and like oh the hot guys like with an accent. You know, the accent, you know, it's so, <laughs> it just goes really left. I'm so glad you've come to your senses, my love. I was surprised at how gory you managed to get with a PG-13, because I feel like it used to be that you wouldn't see any blood at all, but there's there's tons of blood in this movie. <laughs> well, it's, you know what it is, it's like about the color of blood. It's all about like, really? if they, let, they let in dark blood. So you've just got to darken up the blood. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, that's a nice way around. Oh, it. I'm happy about that too. <laughs> it's also cool to see Natalie Emanuel playing the lead because you know I, I've seen her in a ton of stuff, obviously, but I don't think I've ever seen her in horror before. So it's kind of really. And nor has she ever played the lead role before, and she oh, utterly really? deserves it. No, yeah, she has not played the lead role. Oh, that's a yeah, surprise. she deserves it. She's a wonderful talent, and um, and she really delivered like every single minute of the film. She was so committed to the character. She never, never uh, made. I never made it easy for her because there were so many scenes where she needed to be, you know, in distress. But she delivered it above and beyond. Well, it is a really fresh cast though, because it's not just like the people that you've seen in these kinds of movies over and over again. Same with Thomas Doherty. I mean, it's the first time I've seen. I, that I've really seen him in a movie and I thought he was he was kind of a real find. He was really good. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I actually, to be honest, I didn't know who Thomas was before uh, and I was kind of half distracted. I got this audition in and then I literally had to stop in the middle of what I was doing because I was so mesmerized by him. He's re a real find and I think, you know, he's just going to get bigger and bigger and he deserves that. He's a, an, an incredible talent. He has this face like Bella Lugosi almost that was kind of like looking at him and I was like, he has this kind of this weird look and I didn't necessarily know yeah. it was a Going in on himself. But then when you're like, oh, he's fake, yeah. vampire. <laughs> but no, he does have this striking look and this striking yeah. presence. Um, but yeah, luckily he has the talent to back it up. Huh? It was always just my mom and me to have a family. That's what I really want. No way. I got a cousin. That is the whitest man I've ever seen. He wants to meet up. Oliver? Cousin Evie. <laughs> it sounds so Jane Austen when you say it like that. <laughs> you know, my mom always wanted to take me to England to learn about our family history. There's a wedding coming up, actually. You should come. I would love to, but oh, I... Come on, everyone is dying to meet you. Uh... Wow, it's incredible. I believe this is one of our important guests. Evie, this is a close friend of the family, Walter Deville. Uh, hi. Hi. Looking forward to getting to know you better, Evie. What are they doing down there? Miss, you should return to your room. We're all so delighted that you're here. Which one's the groom? The groom and his bride will make their grand entrance tomorrow. Ready? I, I can't shake the feeling that everyone is staring at me. Can you blame them? You and Walter seem to be getting awfully close, Evie. I'm curious, though. What has he told you about us? Ow! Let me see. <gasps> Here she is. Where are the bride and groom? As you all know, there has been someone missing from this table. But that once broken bond will be renewed tonight. <laughs> to Evie. My new bride. I want to go home. But this is your home. 
get her prepared. The bar is in the north. The motor racing. Help me, please. Here, yeah, dear. Hello, Mr. Harker here. There's a young lady who seems quite distressed. I'm so glad you've come to your senses, my love.